another map by Orlando Poe. Uh, we get to Savannah. We get to the end of our discussion here. Now, I was really confused by this map until I figured out that north is this way. So if you remember that north is this way, so here's the Savannah River, here's Fort Pulaski, here's Savannah, and it shows the, the uh, earthworks uh, that are defending uh, Savannah. By this time, the right, the right wing and the left wing have converged. They have surrounded Savannah. Sherman has 62,000 men. William Hardy, the guy who they named Hardyville, uh, South Carolina. Uh, he had 10,000 troops, but they were heavily entrenched. Uh, some of those were made up of the Georgia militia survivors from the Battle of Bruce Wall, because you'll recall, they were originally sent out to go to either Augusta or Savannah, whichever one they could safely get to. Uh, here's Fort Jackson, which still stands today, which was the anchor of the interior line defenses of Savannah. So Sherman, uh, Sherman is not known for his patience. And Sherman's standing outside of Savannah. Savannah is between him and the Union supply ships. And uh, Sherman just wants to get this mess over with. So he figures out the Achilles heel of the uh, Confederate defenses in Savannah, which is Fort McAllister on the Ogeechee River. Uh, it's about 10 miles south of Savannah. If you're familiar with the area today, it would be the Richmond Hill area. And this is a heavily fortified fort. Uh, it uh, has uh, earthworks. It was after Pulaski, after what the rifle and cannon did to brick forts. In 1862, all new forts were built with uh, uh, earth, earthworks, so a cannon, cannonball, if it hit brick, a rifle cannonball hit brick uh, would blow a hole in the wall. Rifle uh, a cannonball hitting uh, earthworks would just go boom, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a bullet hitting a blamage. Like so it's heavily fortified. It's preventing Union supply ships from coming up the Ogeech. Sherman is not pleased with the situation. Confederates only have 200 troops. 200 troops. This is the gateway to Savannah. Sherman knows if he takes McAllister, the, the Savannah is, is taken. December 13th, troops under General William Hazen of Pickett's, uh, Pickett's Mill fame storms the fort, and it takes it in a battle lasting 15 minutes. Uh, it's one of those little ironies of history, almost simultaneously. Sherman is watching this from a spyglass from across the Ogeechee. And just as Hazen takes uh, uh, the fort, the Union supply ships who've been waiting downstream come up far enough, and Sherman gets on a boat, and he's taken out uh, and greeted by the admiral of the, uh, the Union forces in that area. So not only is McAllister fall, but it, it, it with literally within 10 minutes, Sherman has uh, met up with the, his supply line. From Sherman's point of view, the battle's over. Sherman's this great strategic figure. To him, it's obvious. Well, we took McAllister. We have our supply line. Now it's time for you guys to surrender. And that's basically what his, his view was. Oh, here's a couple other pictures of McAllister. Uh, this is overlooking the Ogeechee. And uh, inside the mounds is where they kept the supplies and then slept in it. <coughs> December 15th, Sherman orders Howard and Slocum to prepare for an assault on Savannah. Uh, but he just can't believe that Hardy really wants to defend the city once McAllister is uh, surrendered. So he sends an ultimatum to Hardy, which, uh, who politely refuses him. Well, in the middle of this, Something amazing happens from Sherman's point of view. You ever work for a large corporation, you're working on a project, you're getting close to being done, and your boss comes in and tells you, well, just drop it, we have this new thing we want to work on. This is exactly what happened. Does that ever happen to you, Linda? Never. Never. <laughs> so uh, this is exactly what happens to him. He's about to take Savannah. I mean, strategic significance, it's like Vicksburg or Atlanta or Gettysburg. He, he's Savannah in his, is in his grasp. And he gets a telegram from Grant saying, I could use a little help here up in Petersburg. Uh, could you ship your whole army up here, like, right away and help me in Petersburg? Well, you know, again, Sherman, who's not known for his patience, just goes bonkers. But then he figures out, well, you know, it would take weeks to get enough ships and supplies. 
to do this. So I'm just going to take Savannah anyway, and we'll, we'll sort out what happens afterwards. December 20th, Hardy is told by his commanding officer, Beauregard, he's told Savannah is less important than keeping your army intact. Uh, Beauregard tells him there's no way you could possibly beat Sherman. You need to get your troops out of there and let what happens to Savannah happen. So Hardy starts evacuating his troops from Savannah using a pontoon bridge across the uh, uh, Savannah River. If you've ever been in Savannah and you're going across Route 17, the, um, it's not Herman Talmage, it's his father. Ed Edward Talmage? Eugene. That's not right. Eugene. Eugene. Eugene, that's it, yeah. The Eugene Talmage Bridge on 17 is essentially uh, where the escape route was. They put a pontoon bridge and, and they crossed. Uh, by the next day, Confederate troops are gone. They, they evacuated the city. Union troops entered on December 21st. Uh, this uh, drawing here so, shows Sherman reviewing his troops as they march into Savannah. So essentially, Sherman takes uh, Savannah without a shot fired. Uh, this is a letter to Grant telling him, uh, hey, uh, Ulysses, uh, by the way, I took Savannah anyway, <laughs> and uh, there's a bunch of cool stuff in it, and uh, so, so here it is. I, I won't read, uh, read it to you. The more famous message, of course, goes to Lincoln. <laughs> there is a representative from the Treasury Department of the U.S. government is in the town, and Sherman is not known for his public relations abilities. <laughs> And this treasury agent takes Sherman aside and says, you know, it would be a really nice gesture if you presented Savannah to Lincoln as a Christmas present. So Sherman sends this famous communique, maybe the most famous of the whole war, I beg to present you as a Christmas gift, the city of Savannah. And uh, Sherman should have left it that, but then he had to get all geeky and tacky. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? This was the cool part. Even at that, he really needed it. 